My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UiPath. Today we will build a reusable component in UiPath with libraries. A reusable component is particularly uh, useful whenever we uh, have a component that we use over and over in all our projects. So uh, here we will uh, create a component that closes down all apps. And you will use that a lot uh, when you start a workflow to make sure that we have no instances open that can interfere with our project. So um, if you like or uh, enjoy the video, please subscribe to the channel to get all the new videos that I'll make about UiPath and RPA. So let's get started. We go to UiPath Studio, then we click Library. And we can call this library something. This could be uh, everyday, um, everyday Library. And then we could have a description and, and we can uh, choose where we put it. So this one is we'll just create it here. And now we can create a library. This library will, as I said, be used uh, to close down the apps that we will specify. So we can, um, we can have this um, library and we can, from project to project, we can just specify which apps we want to close and then we can just drag it in and it automatically closes the apps that we want. So uh, let's go down to our start menu here and then click CMD, that's the command prompt, choose that. And um, a smart thing here, let's say that we want to uh, close down all instances of a certain program. Let's let me open a notepad. So we want to close down all notepads. Then we can just write in here task kill, sorry, dot f dot i m and then notepad.x and then click enter and then all instances of notepads will close. However, be, be aware that this F will, uh, so if you got anything in it, it won't save, it will just automatically kill it. So uh, yeah, so don't run it if you have something in your notepad now, but I assume you don't, so we can click uh, enter and we can see that it has now been terminated and it closed down. So that process we wanna use in our reusable component. Let's see how that is done. So uh, click a new sequence and we can call this kill apps like this and it will open up a sequence. And what we'll do here is that we will need to open up a um, application that will be the command prompt here. So uh, let's find the activities and then an open application, drag it in. Then we will indicate uh, the window uh, with the command prompt that's here. And we will fine tune the selector. So click the three ribbons here, click the edit selector. And then instead of command prompt, we'll just write an asterisk because this can and will change. Uh, you will see that. So now we have a more dynamic selector and click OK. So uh, this works. Then we need to type something into it. You know, the task kill that we typed before. So uh, let's uh, type something into it and we'll drag this guy in. And um, we will. We don't have to indicate something because it's in this do in the application scope. So we'll just type something in, and that will be in quotation marks. So task kill. That's just the same as we wrote before. F I M notepad.x, and then we will have an enter. So click the plus and find the enter. So that's it. Now this one will close down the notepads. Let's try it again. I'm just close this down again, and let's run the workflow. So now we run it and hopefully um, the command prompt will be in our window. However, it was up here, but you can see what is done and you saw that it closed down the notepad. So this works. However, uh, it will be a little bit complicated to say that we want to have uh, 10 programs we want to close or maybe 20 or whatever. Then it will be a little bit of a mess to update this every time with all the new exe files. So what we can do here is to make it for each loop and loop through an array and uh, just have it automatically closed. So let's create an array. Go down to variables and create variables. We can call this array apps. You can call it whatever you want. And then in the variable type, change it to an array of t. And uh, instead of integer, we will choose a string like this. And the scope, oh, click OK. Then the scope, that will be the kill apps, the whole one, and uh, this should do. So, and then we can type in a default value. So say that we want to close notepad. So uh, curly brackets, note, oh, notepad. And then we want to close uh, down Excel as well, maybe like this. So now we created an array with notepad and Excel in it. So that's it. 
Then we want to loop through this array and close what, what's ever in this value. So um, we need a for each. So uh, find a for each. Um, and then we then we will drag this guy in, in the do. So drag it in here, delete this body. And then we can uh, say for each item in this array that we just created, array apps, then we want to uh, type something in. So drag this guy up here. And then we need to uh, mark this for each and change it to uh, string. And now we can change uh, our uh, notepad here to um, our uh, item that will be the values that's in the array. So uh, let's uh, mark this type into. And uh, so here, instead of this notepad, we'll have in the item. So uh, let's have a quotation mark here, then a plus, and then we will delete this notepad and an item, and then plus again, quotation mark. So this one will loop through all the array apps and insert whatsoever in uh, the array. So, um, and then it will, uh, automatically uh, close down these apps so we can close open up notepad and then have an excel and then we can try to run it to see that it actually works so now we uh, open up these two let's uh, run this file and you will see that ui path is running outside the window again but you will see i can drag this guy down here you can see that it actually worked say that we also wanted to uh, have the um, command prompt uh, closed afterwards, then we will just have a um, comma and cmd, that's the command prompt exe file, and this one will close the command prompt after uh, the sequence, so we won't have that open either. So that's quite clever, isn't it? However, we can, we can make it even more clever. And how is that? Well, it's um, we can create uh, the values in orchestrator so as assets so we can just change them there and then we won't have to touch anything in our uh, library or anywhere we just uh, make the values in orchestrator and then we'll um, uh, run the library in our projects so let's see how that is done we will uh, go to orchestrator and in the assets and remember if you haven't set up orchestrator yet uh, to be linked with uipath then i have a guide here in the description below so you can just use that and set it up and after you've done that then you will click the assets and then click a plus we'll create a new assets and uh, the asset name that could be maybe just apps to close and then the text that should not be because this one will be a string we cannot create an array in orchestrator so this one will just be notepad um, what was it? Excel, we can have even Word, and we can have CMD. So this is a string, and the names, are, they, are, they are separated by comma. So let's create it. Now we can get this asset down to our workflow. So let me copy this. Then we go to the workflow, and then we will have a get asset. We'll drag this guy in. And here, the asset name, that's the name that we just created in Orchestrator. So uh, remember to make quotation marks and then we'll have the apps to close. This one will uh, get the asset and then we will save it to a string. So control K here, str, we can call this apps. Remember that this will be a string. This is not, a, we cannot create it an array. So we have to do it here uh, directly in the workflow, but that's no problem. So uh, have an assign, drag this in. And now we need to assign to, so to this variable, we will, uh, we will no longer have a default value. So let us close this one. So we need to assign the value we got, just got from Orchestrator and we need to design it, ass assign it to an array. So and that's uh, fairly easy. So here we will have the array of apps like this. And then we will have our string from up here. That will be the string apps. And we will split that. Like this and then we will have a parenthesis and then we will choose how we can split the apps and that's by the comma so quotation marks and a comma this one will split it up here into four uh, was it three or four it was four right uh, different um, strings and it and it will make an array and it will add them to this array so that's what's happening here so now we essentially created a loop in where we can get the asset from orchestrator and then we can assign it to an array and then we can run it, loop the array and close down the apps. That's quite clever, isn't it? So let's try to maybe just open notepad and well, let's open Excel again and see that it actually worked. We can indeed get our assets down from orchestrator and do the operations. So let's try to run this file. 
Now we will run, and I'm sorry, but I think the command prompt will again run outside the window, but uh, you'll see that it works. And it worked. It did even close down. It will run all the commands. So even though uh, Word is not open, it will just try to close down Word. And if it's not open, it will um, don't do a thing again. But now we uh, created a project and then we can, uh, and we don't have to edit this project here in, uh, in this library because we can just go to orchestrator and we can just edit it up here. So we can choose from every project, we can just choose uh, where we want to, uh, what uh, apps uh, that we want to uh, edit. And we can also have uh, created new uh, values here. But, but this one uh, is, worked, is working, so let's cancel this. And then we will uh, publish this uh, project. So um, let's publish it here. And um, you cannot publish it to Orchestrator if you run the UiPath Studio. Um, you can do that in the enterprise version. So we'll just uh, publish it to a local folder. That's equally fine. And um, we can choose the folder here. So click uh, the uh, thing here. And I'll just publish mine to a new folder on the desktop. However, if you uh, tend to use this, publish it to a folder in your documents or your UiPath folder in where you can easily find it and you won't delete it. But I'll uh, choose mine here, so select folder. Then we click publish and we are building and compiling. And in the second that we have um, actually published our first library. So that's it, that's it. We published this library with the kill apps in it. Um, we, could, we can make more uh, pack sequences that we can upload to this library, so more packages. However, we will just, uh, that will just be the kill apps. Now, what we can do is that we can um, open a new process and try to use our library, because now we saved it. So go to Home and then just click a new process now, like you'll normally do. Click Create. And we will create a um, process here. And um, so here we'll just open up the main workflow. And what we will do here is that we will, um, first we click manage packages and then we go to settings because we need to import our package. We need to let UiPath know that we will use our package skill apps and we need to tell it where we have placed it. So click the plus here. The package name that could just be uh, whatever, that, that could just be uh, the package source, that could just be every day source and then we can choose where it is so click the three dots here and uh, go to the desktop because that's that was where i placed my library and you can place you can point to it wherever you placed your library so do this and then click add and we can see down here that the everyday source has been added and we can see that there's, there's an everyday uh, library here and um, we need to mark this and then we need to install it so install and then click save We'll just uh, wait a second. And now we can actually find it here in um, our um, activities manager. So if we search for uh, every day library, we can see that we have our kill apps here. So we can drag that, this one in. And because we have everything, we can ch change the parameters up here in Orchestrator, which apps we want to use. Then we can just run it. So let me show, let's just open Notepad and then it will close down Notepad and Command Prompt. Oh, we can also have Excel open. It just takes a few seconds to open it. So let's see uh, that it actually works with uh, installing this library package here. So now we run it um, and outside the window, it's actually running. You can see the end of it and it actually worked. Isn't that clever? Now you learned how you can create your own library and how you can use them, how you can use the packages in your project. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That will really help me a lot. Have a good day. Bye-bye.